Now that we've uh, done the work to the flywheel to inspect it and make sure everything's fine and that the clutch is set, the next thing we're going to want to do is basically put the wheel back together. The very first thing to look at is our gear system here. Um, the most important thing to look at is two little timing marks, and we cover this in the manual. You'll see a, a line drawing that very clearly depicts um, what we need to, to look at in terms of these, these are called timing marks. The timing marks are meant to be set up directly across from each other. So you're going to want to make sure that these two marks are facing each other when everything's assembled and dropped into the wheel. Uh, what this does is it allows the gears to spin more freely because they're um, basically in time with each other. Um, although the gears are identical, uh, all four gears are basically um, duplicates. So we have two of the same on the outer gears, two of the same on the inner gears. However, the gain gear here uh, has a special ratio built into it, which is why we need to set the timing marks. Set the timing marks facing each other, across from each other, and then what we'll do is proceed to uh, assemble this. The next thing you want to look at um, is the shaft. You want to make sure that the shaft is nice and clean, that it doesn't have any issues, um, any burring or any excessive wear. You can see on this example it's been used but it's uh, in very good condition still so there's no problems here. The pin is still tight uh, and then you want to put this together before we drop it in the wheel. This will help you align everything. So now another visual inspection of the wheel and we can see inside there's no issues. Uh, there's a little bit of dust from the um, from having been run, nothing major. There's a little bit of grease. That's all acceptable. We'll put this back together. Now, when it uh, comes to timing, what we want to do is, using both hands, you'll want to set one and then clock the other to match and then set the whole assembly into the ring gear. Now, the ring gear is the giant gear that's inside the wheel that's assembled here. You'll want to make sure that the, uh, that the assembly slips right in without any issues and is aligned on our timing marks and as you can see here timing marks line up, gears already set in place so it's ready to accept the flywheel. Next thing we're going to want to do is drop in the bushing. These are oil light bushings so it's a good idea to keep them lubricated because you're spinning at such high RPMs. Uh, one of the things I like to use is just a light oil and just a little dab will do you. We use uh, WD-40 and all we do here is just a tiny squirt just enough to get it wet, make sure everything's good, and then you can drop the uh, flywheel in place. There's nothing special here, everything's already been uh, put in according to the timing marks and whatnot, so we're just basically dropping the gear. And that's it. The second bushing goes in, and what I like to do is kind of backfill the spool with a little bit of oil just before I put in the last bushing. So without trying to make a mess here, let me see good shot and the bushing and the spacer. The spacer is red. It's an aluminum spacer and it's red and it's anodized red on purpose so you can find it on any surface. It's easy to see and that's the last spacer that goes in place in the assembly. This is the probably the tricky part. The trickiest part of assembling the wheel is getting this lined up on the first shot. This is the wheel cover and the wheel. And what you want to do is just sight one of the holes and sight one of the threaded, threaded uh, screw holes and basically just with, with the bearing not installed, you want to keep the ball bearing out of it. Sight one of the holes, match it, and then just basically eyeball it into place. Next thing you want to do is work the uh, bead lock in place to make sure that that's in the right, that that's engaged correctly. And some people, you can do this, you can uh, actually put a tool in one of the holes, that's fine. You got to be careful of that because you can damage the threads, but it does help you align things. So for example, if you do it like this, you put a screw opposite the tool. The unfortunate thing is you don't want to use the tool that you need to tighten the screw. This is where a power tool does come in handy. You can use any kind of a drill. The only issue is you want to make sure that if you have an electric tool like a drill, that it has a clutch and you want to set the clutch to the lightest setting and that way you don't strip your screws.
I like to tighten them by hand, so I'll go ahead and just get them close and not rely on the clutch on the electric tool. You can hear the clutch engaging, but for safety, so I don't have stripped screws, I'll just make sure every one of these is tightened correctly. Looks good, last step, put in the bearing. It's good to go, here's your wheel ready to run.